Yeah. Um, you talk about this as a compromise. I'm wondering if you could talk about what you lost on. Look, you, when the American people win and we avoid default and retirement accounts are not in flux and the global economy is not uh, crashing, I'm going to call that a win every day. Um, you know, individual people have issues with different parts of the bill. You've heard uh, some of your colleagues bring up concerns that some members have. Uh, I have to look at what was our ultimate goal. Uh, and we are in divided government. This is what happens in divided government. They get to have an opinion, and we get to have an opinion. And all things equal, I think this compromise agreement is reasonable for both sides. Uh, and that's what we sought. Protect the American people from the worst possible outcome, first ever default. Allow Republicans uh, to have some uh, some curbing of spending, which is flatline for non-defense discretionary, uh, and we move on and get an appropriations process that works. And I think that's a, a good middle ground. Um, just one more. Um, given that this process brought the U.S. to the brink, and this process isn't quite over yet, um, has there been any reconsideration of doing away with the debt ceiling at some point? Is there, you know, <laughs> late at night when you had no laundry or at other times, um, where is the administration thinking on the usefulness of having a debt ceiling? Right now, I'm thinking about uh, how quickly this can get to the president's desk uh, and we can avoid default, and not only avoid default for a little while until 2025, which is what this bill does. And it does give us some breathing room not to uh, enter into uh, these uh, chaotic uh, circumstances which would bring uncertainty to the American people. That's where I'm focused. Good. Dr. Young, progressives would say that you lost on several provisions, permitting reform, work requirements, spending cuts that they view as harmful. Congresswoman Jaya Paul said today that the CPC wants to immediately sit down with the president and talk about what the next two years are going to be like. So does the White House feel, as a result of the way this process played out, that it has some work to do with repairing relationships with progressives? And would the White House also like to set up a meeting like that? Look, I don't do the president's schedule. I'll let other people opine on who he will meet with uh, and when. What I will say is I've worked uh, in many divided government situations. Um, I think this is where you would expect a bipartisan agreement to land. It's just the reality. Uh, there's not unified government. They have ideas. We have to listen to them. We have to talk about it. We have to find a place that is not harmful for the American people or try to stave off the worst. I think we did that. Um, and so we have to look at the big picture. That's what I'm going to do over the next two years. What can we do to find common ground, work together? This president has a history of bipartisanship, including over the last few years, including on Veterans, PACT Act, and bipartisan infrastructure law. So there is opportunity to work together here. Um, and we have seen that over the last two years with this president, Republicans, and there's opportunity to keep that going. You said a couple times that the agreement represents a compromise, and you said it's reasonable for both sides. But does the president feel like he came out ahead with this deal? The American people came out ahead. When you go into these things, what are you doing it for? Sure, there are some days where I have to slap myself, and you're like, ah, let it go. It's fine. The point is to avoid default, not hurt American people in the process by having draconian changes uh, like we saw in the Republican bill on Medicaid, which we did not carry forward. So protect the things uh, that would have hurt hardworking Americans, come up with reasonable spending levels, which I think most Americans, when they hear a spending freeze, that's reasonable, um, and do our basic, have Congress do its basic constitutional duty, which is avoid default. So this isn't about Republicans or Democrats. If you get into who won, who didn't, you lost already. When you're talking about default, it is the American people won today, uh, especially when it gets to the president's desk, because we have avoided what have, would have been absolute catastrophic. Look, we've seen government shutdowns, and I think people understand what the feel is. Thankfully, we have not seen default in this country. So when we talk about catastrophe, 
since we have not seen it, have not felt it, I think people think it's a little hyperbole. It is not. Every economist tells us uh, that all the gains we've seen, we go backwards. That we're back to situations like we've seen in the pandemic. That was absolutely unacceptable. Um, and we avoided that by also protecting some key things and not violating our core values.